Uh, well, here we are again. If I uh, disappear, don't worry, it's just a proximal coughing. Now, it's uh, winter, and I'm interested in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. I think the latest uh, problems regarding the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and Stan Grant, one of these senior reporters, highlights something I've been saying now for over three decades. When I talk about the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, I talk about the government gelded, that's right, the government gelded ABC for a variety of reasons. Now, Mr Grant said quite clearly the situation he found himself in was to a significant degree due to institutional failure. In fact, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation wasn't willing to stand up for its employees. Now, in 1999, this is just a little story that highlights how the Australian Broadcasting Corporation works. In 1999, I was invited on an overnight radio program, an Australian overnight radio program, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, to give an anarchist and ra radical perspective of what was happening politically in the country. Now, I was invited by the host who had been hosting this program nationally, overnight program from midnight to uh, 6 a.m. for over a decade. And we had a bit of fun for the first three months, and after three months, she rang me and said, look, we have to change it. There's been complaints. Remember, this was during the Howard era, and I always used to describe Mr Howard the Prime Minister at that stage is core and non-core promise man. There's been complaints and we need some balance. So, Senator Julian McGowan, a National Party Senator in Victoria, would wander down to the studio in the morning, every week, and we conduct a discussion, debate about the politics of the day. Now, unfortunately for Julian McGowan, he was a reasonably pleasant human being, but uh, his political nous, although he'd been a member of the Senate for a number of years, wasn't brilliant. And normally I would win most of the arguments. Three months later, this is how the government guild at ABC worked, three months later, the program was taken off air the host who had been hosting this program for over a decade was removed from the program and both McGowan and myself obviously were removed because the program was taken off air. Now fortunately for the host, she was one of the few permanent staff left in the ABC so she wasn't fired but given backroom duties. To a significant degree this highlights the pressure which governments apply to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Now, the last three decades, there have been a concerted effort led by the Howard government and the Murdoch media to actually destroy the Australian Broadcasting Corporation as a political force. Not as a cultural force, but a political force. So when Mr Stan Grant had had enough and said that the main reason he was leaving because of institutional failure, I understood completely what he was saying. And this institutional failure occurs in many ways. The first is the composition of the board of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, which is the prerogative of the government of the day. And we've seen appointments to the ABC board of people whose primary task is to abolish the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Now when I talk about the government guild at ABC, I'm not making any direct criticisms of staff because they find themselves in a particularly difficult situation. Because although government is not supposed to interfere in the Broadcasting Corporation, it interferes in a number of ways. One, it selects a board 
which has the same ideological position as the government of the day. And the ideological position for many years was to abolish the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. It wasn't for the National Party, which understood how important it is in rural areas. Uh, it would have been abolished many years ago by the Howard government, successive Conservative governments. So there's that. The board is stacked by ideological appointments who have no interest in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Their only interest is basically to promote the interests of the Murdoch Empire and to ensure that the Australian Broadcasting Corporation does, doesn't apply direct competition. Now the second way in which the Australian Broadcasting Corporation has been controlled is by budget cuts. Now historically over the last 30 years we've seen an extraordinary number of budget cuts as far as the ABC is concerned. We saw the ridiculous budget cuts which stopped the ABC broadcasting in the Pacific region and we're now paying the price for not actually having that contact with Pacific Islander people around the Pacific region. And much of the problems now faced by the government are directly related to that decision to stop broadcasting. At the same time, we have seen budget cuts which have meant that staff have been retrenched or asked to leave. Another way the government has gelded the Australian Broadcasting Corporation is through the appointment of middle management. Now, the people you see and hear on the ABC are not the decision makers, the shakers and movers. The agenda is promoted by middle management. So what you do as a government is you appoint a sympathetic board to your ideological position and then you appoint middle management who've got the same sympathies. And this middle management then ensures that the type of agenda which is followed by the Australian Co Broadcasting Corporation is an agenda which suits the government of the day and suits the ideological position of the government of the day. I mean, it's one thing to hone in on some individual who's, you know, hasn't done the right thing. It's another thing to hone in on some billionaire who exploits these countries' resources. And we never see that in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation because of middle management and the type of issues that the ABC is actually allowed to pursue. Now, another way of ensuring the ABC is not a competitor to the Murdoch Empire and the Stokes Empire and does not promote a more reformist radical agenda is, is by employing staff on short-term contracts. That's right. Most of the talking heads you see in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation have been employed on short-term contracts that are renewed every two to three years. So obviously, if you kind of shove and push against middle management and want to actually extend the type of material that you want to look at, then you will find that your contract is not renewed. And I know a number of Australian Broadcasting Corporation broadcasters have walked away because of the the censorship which occurs in the ABC. Now Mr Grant, Mr Stan Grant, is a very well known reporter, not just as a First Nations person, but as a sophisticated, urbane reporter. He's reported in most trouble spots around the world over the last 30 years. He has a great understanding of the way the Australian Broadcasting Corporation works. But if even he was disgusted by the fact that when he was singled out by conservatives, reactionaries, neo-Nazis and racists because he had the audacity to question the coronation, the question the uh, run a program which actually questioned colonisation. We saw nobody, nobody from the board, nobody from middle management actually stand up and say that this is the type of issue 
they want to follow. So when you look at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, you'll see cultural issues, you'll see personal issues, you'll see uh, drama, documentaries, you'll see programs about First Nations people, you'll see a lot of music, extraordinary amount of entertainment, but entertainment, you know, by uh, entertainers that basically use the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to promote their particular concert or authors who promote a particular book they've just written. So in many regards, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation mimics what we see in the corporate-owned media. It mimics the same philosoph philosophy it wholeheartedly supports the private investment for private profit mantra. Not that I expect the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to actually promote something different, but you, what you do expect in a broadcaster which is publicly funded, that means it's funded by your taxes, you do expect a broad range of opinions not just opinions about First Nations situ situation, not just opin opinions about culture, not just opinions about music and drama and books, not just reporting on politics within the narrow boundaries that you are allowed to report, but actually ask significant questions. Ask significant questions about the type of society we have why there is increasing gap between the rich and the poor, why a million Australian children live in poverty. Now occasionally, occasionally these issues are broached, but normally they're not examined fully. And in many regards, the ABC has become nothing more than a mouthpiece for the government of the day. Look at the situation in the Ukraine and Russia currently and the type of report we see in that situation. Look at the situation during election campaigns. Because there is legislation in place which determines the way elections are covered and what you find during an election campaign because of this particular legislation which basically makes the ABC a little more than a mouthpiece for the government of the day you see the major party, you see the party in government, which continues to have much of the publicity during an election campaign. But that's not the issue. The issue is institutional failure, as Stan Grant said. Institutional failure. The issue isn't the racism in the Australian community. The issue isn't the, not, the issue isn't even the fact that they're not willing to stand up for their own employees. But an institutional failure in terms of how particular subjects are covered. And how it's always the same voices which appear in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Now that's the issue. It's an institutional failure an institutional failure which has been brought about by a number of uh, strategies. Decreased funding, short-term contracts, ideologically appointed middle management, a board that has no interest in the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, none whatsoever. It's more interested in uh, curtailing what the Australian Broadcasting Corporation can do. I mean, a national broadcaster which is publicly funded should be in a position to look at all aspects of society, not aspects that are deemed to be appropriate because they don't challenge the power structures in society and that's the problem with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. It's not a problem which you can lay at the feet of the broadcasters. They are just that, broadcasters, talking heads, television, radio, social media. But it's a problem that goes much, much, much further. 
it's a problem about topics that are taboo. Topics like why should our mineral resources be owned and controlled by a handful of people? Why should we continue to have growing inequality? Why should the financial sector continue to dominate everyday existence? Why aren't there programs regarding issues which challenge the status quo? Not in ter terms of cultural values, but in terms of power, in terms of where power lies, who exercises power, and for what reason that power is exercised. While the Australian Broadcasting Corporation continues to be gilded by the government of the day, the stay and grants of the world will come and go. Because the Australian Broadcasting Corporation has no room for independent thinkers. It has no room for people who think outside the box. It has no room for independent ideas. As long as it mirrors the corporate-owned media and promotes the same agenda as the corporate-owned media, the chances of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation providing a valuable service to the Australian people is non-existent. And that's what we see. An Australian Broadcasting Corporation that may produce documentaries, that may have a, a, a range of programs, that look at social issues. But ultimately, unless they are allowed to look at power, where power lies, who exercises power, and the need for reform, if not radical revolutionary change, nothing will change. Not that I expect the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to change its colours, because the way it is structured, it is obvious that it is there to basically act as little more than a mirror image of the corporate-owned media. You can't expect to see any real change unless the board which is appointed is a board which is willing to give direction to middle management and the faces on TV and the voices on radio and social media give them the freedom to actually look at a variety of issues, not just issues which don't challenge the status quo or challenge the power of the 1% that own the means of production, distribution, exchange and communication. So Stan Grant, you're right. It is about institutional failure. It's not about the viewers. It's not about the racists. It's not about the reactionaries, the conservatives, the monarchists. It's about institutional failure. It's about the failure of an institution which has been gelded by the successive governments to promote the status quo.